Today we'll be talking about uh, evidence of evolution, and this will conclude this section on evolution. And what I've decided to put up here for you is just a basic uh, kind of cartoonish evolutionary tree. And you can see here that at the end of each of these branches, we have quite a few different organisms from cnidarians, which are jellies and echinoderms and fish and amphibians. And remember that these evolutionary trees just show how organisms are related to each other. So for example, if we look, say, at the mammals, the mammals are much more closely related to birds than, say, they are to spiders. Uh, just because they're so much closer and they share these common ancestors here on the tree. Alright, so we'll start with evidence of evolution by talking about a term called biogeography. And what is biogeography? Biogeography is the study of where organisms live now and where their ancestors lived in the past. And you may have seen this picture here before, but what it's a picture of is uh, what's known as Pangea. And Pangea is when all the uh, continents were really close to one another. And uh, there's actually fossil evidence of some of these organisms and uh, you know how they are connected on each of these continents here. All right, so that's biogeography, study of where organisms live now and where their uh, ancestors lived in the past. Uh, the patterns of these fossil finds uh, actually support that now living organisms have evolved from their common ancestors. And uh, the two that we could, or the example that we could talk about are these tortoises here. And, oops, I'll go back. Uh, these tortoises are, uh, were found on the Galapagos Islands, and we see that they're, you know, that they're different. You know, this one right here has a shorter neck, where this one was on, uh, I believe, Hood Island and has a longer neck. Uh, they're both closely related, but they're actually different species, right? So this is more evidence of evolution. Uh, another way we can look at uh, evolution is that it takes a very long time. And remember that Darwin knew that the Earth was old, but at the time he didn't have the technology to prove it. Later, scientists used what's uh, known as radioactive dating, so they can use that technology to figure out how old approximately rocks are, uh, and they can also see how old the fossils are in those rocks, and what they found is that Earth is approximately, approximately 4.5 billion years old. And so we can see here that the technology of radioactive dating actually supports Darwin's uh, hypothesis that the Earth is extremely old, and not just a couple thousand years old. Well, when Darwin was coming up with the theory of evolution, uh, he found quite a few different fossils, you know, but he didn't find every single fossil, and he didn't find the fossils uh, that's now known as intermediate fossils, or these fossils that are, are considered like the missing link. All right? But later, paleontologists have found fossils that fill in those evolutionary gaps. And so... You know, these recent fossil finds are supporting Darwin's theory of evolution. Another way that we can uh, come up with some evidence to support the theory of evolution is comparing organisms' anatomy and embryology. And these terms may be unfamiliar for you, so I put just some very simple definitions. Anatomy is the study of structure. All right, so if we look at this picture here, uh, we see the anatomy or the structure of different limbs of four different animals. On the left here, we have humans, and then we have uh, a cat's limb, a whale's limb, and then we also, at the end here, we have a bat's uh, wing. And so we can study the anatomy of different organisms, uh, and if they share similar anatomy, then we can say that they have evolved from common ancestors.
Uh, we can also look at the embryos of different organisms, and this study is called embryology, and that's the study of a developing embryo. All right, so remember, an embryo is uh, something that's either developing inside of an organism or maybe inside of an egg. And we have quite a few different uh, organisms here in this picture. We have a fish, a salamander, a turtle, looks like a chicken, uh, a cat, a rabbit, and last, last, a human. And if we look at the early stages of these embryos, it's very difficult to say, oh, this one right here is going to be a salamander. Uh, just because they look so similar. And so, you know, a little bit later on, this is when we start to see that these organisms, uh, you know, are really developing into a, a different species. But looking at very early stages of an embryo, they all look very similar, which is more evidence that we all descend from a common ancestor. So there's a term here that I like to talk about, or these, this term here called homologous structures. Right, so we know what a structure is by now, and uh, you may remember the term uh, homologous, and remember that this just means uh, similar or the same. Right, and so these are structures that are shared by related species and inherited by a common ancestor. And these structures are adapted for different purposes. And this image right here shows uh, a human's arm, a cat's leg, a whale's flipper, and a bat's wing. And it, I like this picture because it's color-coded. And so if we look at these four different organisms, you may think, well, how are they related? Or they're probably not related all because, you know, just because they look different. But if we look at the internal structure, we see that they share quite a few similarities. Uh, for example, here in the purple, we have the humerus, okay, so our, our upper arm bone. And, oops, let me go back. If we look, and then if we look at... Uh, a cat, the cat also has a humerus towards the upper, uh, the upper part of the limb. Same thing with a whale right here, and a bat. Well, then if we keep going down, we see that the radius is there, and it's very similar in the other species. So the order, so we go purple, and then orange, and then uh, there's also the ulna, and then the carpels are in the, the, the yellow uh, coloration there. So we can see that these organisms all have homologous structures and they just evolved over or adapted to different purposes and these organisms evolved over time. Uh, another term that uh, supports evolution is vestigial structures. And essentially vestigial structures are just structures inherited from ancestors but they've lost uh, their actual function. And so uh, this picture right here is of a flightless cormorant, right? And there's other cormorants in the world, which is a type of bird, and they do fly. But these right here are the cormorants that made their way to the Galapagos Islands. And over time, they, they no longer flew. They started swimming in the uh, ocean to find their food. And so what they did is they no longer used their wings. And so over many, many generations, uh, their wings were not used for flying, and so uh, they are passed down, but now they, the, you know, these birds can't fly. Uh, down here we have what's known as the three-toed uh, skink, and if you look closely here, you can actually see uh, what appear to be four limbs. Right? And so this skink right here, uh, you know, through generations, stopped using those limbs, and so now they're just left over and these are called vestigial structures. Now, uh, during Darwin's time, you know, he did not know the, the structure of DNA or how, uh, how exactly genes, or he didn't even know about genes, how they were passed down through generations. Uh, but of course, with time and technology, we found that uh, both genetics and molecular biology can help support uh, the theory of evolution. Uh, one major key is the universal genetic code. And so you guys might remember when we were building our DNA structures, we talked about the four different nitrogenous bases within DNA. We talked about the adenine, thymine, uh, guanine, and cytosine. And so those are the four bases that make up our DNA. Uh, but what's really interesting is that all organisms on planet Earth share 
this genetic code. They all have four different bases, A, T, C, and G. So that supports that we all descend from a common ancestor. Uh, another, uh, or, or more evidence for evolution is what's known as homologous genes. So these are genes uh, that are the same, but we find them in different species. And one of the best examples is what's known as Hox genes. And so this image right here shows uh, on the top some of the Hox genes uh, located on a strand of DNA for Dros Drosophila, which is the fruit fly. And down here in the bottom part of the picture, we also have uh, Hox genes that are inside of a mouse. And what scientists have been able to do is compare them and note that they, in two different organisms, they both do similar things. And so really, Hox genes uh, essentially um, you know, create body plans for organisms. And so you can see here, like if, if you were to compare the Drosophila, the red, uh, that it, you know, that it does something up here on the head of the fly. And if you look at the mouse, it also has these Hox genes and uh, it does something towards the head of the mouse. All right, so this is more evidence uh, to support the theory of evolution. Now when Darwin was on uh, the Galapagos Islands, he did notice these different finch species. All right, so finches are types of birds. And he noticed that they had different shaped and sized beaks. And, you know, he was wondering, well, did they all come from a common ancestor, this one finch? And then when they lived on these different islands, they started to eat different foods, you know, like insects and nuts. Um, and so over time, did they evolve a different shaped beak? And, um, you know, so this was his theory, but later on, uh, this couple, known as the Grants, uh, they actually studied Galapagos finches for 35 years to see if Darwin was right. And what they noticed is that food became scarce during droughts, and they found, and they were measuring the beaks, and so they found that finches with the bigger beaks actually survived the best. And so this just shows that variation within a species uh, increases their likelihood of surviving and reproducing. And so all of the, these things together support the theory of evolution.